Hey guys, Mrs. Sirota here, and we are going to be going over the Topic 12 Assessment Practice, or the Topic 12 Review. So, um, Topic 12 was all about converting um, units of measurement. There was customary, and there was metric in here. And customary followed the gallon man, okay? So we had four quarts inside of Gallon King, and inside of each quart we had two pints and two cups in each pint. So I'm just gonna draw this real quick. Again, this is under customary. Something out of your brain that you could do. All right, that gets us down to cups, not the ounces. But I believe there were eight ounces per each cup, eight teardrops, if I'm not mistaken. And then in customary, we had small to large and large to small. And when we go from a smaller unit of measurement, uh, say a cup, and we're bringing it to a larger unit of measurement, say a quart, we're going to have less quarts than we would cups, so we'd have to divide. And if we're going from a quart, say to a cup, we're gonna have more of those units of measurement when we go from a larger unit to a smaller unit, so if we are going to have more of those, that's why we multiply large to small. All right, and then I do remember we had metric conversions, and that was King, Henry, died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk. And this way is small, and going this way is large, and if we're going smaller, we're multiplying by 10 each jump, and if we're going larger, we're dividing by 10 each jump. This is where, if you know how to jump decimals, it gets a lot easier than doing multiplication and division. Okay, so I have now brain dumped all of that information that I would like you to brain dump on your testing day. Um, small to large, large to small, King Henry, and Gallon King. All right, so let's get started with the assessment practice. Number one, which of the following are equivalent or equal? Which of the following are equivalent or equal to seven grams? Well, I happen to know that the unit is the liter, meter, or gram, okay? So that means I would have seven right here. So what is equal to seven right here? And let me do that on a sticky note so that you can actually see what I'm doing. King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk, and this is where that seven goes. Okay, so to go to kilos, I would have to jump one, two, three times. I know my decimal is hidden right here because every whole number has a decimal after it. I'm going to jump that decimal one, two, three times. I'm moving that decimal here. I'm filling it up with zeros. Actually, zero, zero, just like that. And this is zero, zero, seven, point zero, zero, seven. This is one of them. Okay. 70 milligrams. Well, the same seven, if I'm going to do milligrams, I'm going to have to jump it three times this way. One, two, three. That means one, two, three, and that would turn it into 7,000. So that can't be it. That's only 70 milligrams. 7,000 kilograms, well, we already know that's the wrong direction, so that's not it. 7,000 milligrams, well, we just figured that one out right here. Remember, we did milligrams here, and it turned out we should have 7,000 of them, so there's that answer. And 0 .007 milligrams would be moving the decimal in the wrong direction. Well, let's look at that with math real quick. That would be 7 divided by 10, which would turn 7 into 7 tenths. And then that would be 7 tenths divided by 10, which would turn 7 tenths into 7 hundredths. And then we would have 7 hundredths divided by 10, which would turn 7 tenths or 7 hundredths into 7 thousandths. That's how we did the math from here to here. That's how we did the math for this. How do we do the math going this way? That would be one jump is times 10 each jump. 
That would be 7 times 10 times 10 times 10. We know that 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000, so that would be 7 times 1,000 or 7,000. Okay, that's how you would do the math. It's easier if you understand the decimal jumping. All right. Justin's garden is shown below. It's eight yards long and six yards wide. How can you convert the dimensions of Justin's garden from yards to inches? All right. Well, I know that in one yard I have three feet, and I know three feet is 36 inches. I happen to know that conversion. Okay. So. How can I convert these dimensions from yards to inches? So eight yards equals how many inches? All right. And then I have six yards equals how many inches? Well, the first thing Miss Sirota does is determines which one's larger and smaller. The yard is larger. The inches are smaller. We're going towards the side with the blank. Larger to smaller, we multiply. Yards is larger, inches is smaller. We head towards the blank, larger to smaller, we multiply. All right, so this is now eight times. This is now six times. All right, yards to inches. It's going to be times 36. Okay, so I don't know what six times 36 is, but I can do that over to the side. So how can you convert? So. Uh, you would turn the yards into inches. Okay, so you would turn the yards into inches, which is what I'm doing over here. So, 6 times 36... 6 times 6 is 36. Carry the 3. 6 times 3 is 18, 19, 20, 21. 216. So that's 216 inches. Then I have 36 times 8. 8 times 6 is 48. Carry the 4. 8 times 3 is 24. 25, 26, 27, 28, 28, 288. All right. So then it says, what is the perimeter of Justin's garden in inches? So if you remember, perimeter, I'm sorry. If you remember, perimeter is adding all sides. So you have to add all the sides. And you happen to know up here that 8 yards is 288 inches. This would be 288 inches. 6 yards is 216 inches. Well, if you have to add all sides, this is a rectangle. What do you know about a rectangle? The widths are the same, so this is 216 inches. And the lengths are the same in a rectangle, so this is 288 inches. And now you have to add all of these together. So I have 288, 288, 216, 216, and I will add them all together because in perimeter you add all sides. 8 plus 8 is 16, plus 6 is 22, plus 6 is 28. So we have an 8 here, we carry the 2. 8 plus 8 is 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Put the 0 down there, carry the 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So it's 1,008 inches. Okay? And that is perimeter. Perimeter is adding all sides. You had to convert from yards to inches, and then you had to know perimeter on this one. Okay. Number three. Which of the following equations can be used to find how many kilograms are in 2,000 grams? Well, we already know if you're going this direction, you're going to divide by 10 each step. If you're going this direction, you're going to multiply by 10 each step here in the metric. We have 2,000 grams to kilograms. All right, so grams are right here. Kilos are over here. It's a one, two, three step jump. We know we're dividing by 10 each jump. So 
we know that 2,000 should be getting smaller. So 2,000 is going to be getting smaller. So we're going to have 2,000 divided by something. 2,000 divided by something because we have a number in our problem, which is 2,000. And we know we're going this direction, so we're going from smaller to larger. We're going to have a division sign. So I already know it's probably B because that's the only one that sets up this way. Look at that. It's the only one that sets up with 2,000 divided by. Now, what is one, two, three jumps? So three jumps is 1,000. 2,000 divided by 1,000 equals two kilograms. All right. So B is your answer. You have to think logically. You have to think about the math. 2,000 divided by three jumps is divided by 1,000. Okay. And there you go. All right, number four. 10 bales of cotton weigh approximately 5,000 pounds. How can you convert 5,000 pounds to tons? Well, I know 110 equals 2,000 pounds. I happen to know that, and I believe you guys are going to have a conversion chart for this. I have to confirm that, but you're not going to have to know these conversions. You don't even have to know them for the FSA, so we will give you a conversion chart somewhere on this. All right, so I know that one ton, one ton equals 2,000 pounds. How can I convert 5,000 LB equals blank T? That's what that means. How can you convert 5,000 pounds to tons? It just means set up the problem like this. All right, and now I happen to know that in pounds to tons, I'm talking um, convention, um, customary conversions, so I'm doing small to large, large to small. Pounds are the small, tons are the large, so I'm going small to large, which means I will divide. I happen to have 5,000 divided by what? 2,000, because it's pounds to pounds. 5,000 divided by 2,000 equals what? Well, let's get a sticky note because I can't do that. Five, one, two, three, divided by two, one, two, three, which means 2,000 can go into five? No. 2,000 can go into 50? No. 2,000 can go into 500? No. 2,000 can go into 5,000? Yes. How many times? Well, how many twos can go into five? Two of them. Two times 2,000 is 4,000. All right. So that leaves me 1,000 left. Can 2,000 go into 1,000? No, it cannot. Um, all right. Well, it looks like I'm going a little off script anyway. So let's pause this division problem and see. It says, which... So first it says, how can you convert? How can you convert? I don't know. I can divide. Uh, I guess right here, this is the answer. How can I convert? I can divide 5,000 by 2,000. So you could write in there, I can divide 5,000 by 2,000, or I suppose you could write this and that would work as well. Didn't say solve yet. So we're going to pause on this because it didn't say solve. Now it says, which comparison is true? 5,000 pounds is greater than 10,000 tons. Oof. 5,000 pounds equals 3 tons. 5,000 pounds is less than 3 tons. 5,000 pounds is greater than 3 tons. Okay, well, we've gotten this far on our division problem. So we know it's going to be 2 tons and something. It's going to be 2 tons plus something. So 5,000 pounds is less than 3 tons works right now. 5,000 pounds is less than 3 tons. That works right now. 5,000 pounds equals 3 tons. We know it doesn't because we got a 2 in our division problem so far. So that can't be it. 5,000 pounds is greater than 3 tons. We know that's not it because we have a 2 here. Now, 5,000 pounds is greater than 10,000 tons. Well, I'm going to have to turn them both to pounds. So, 10,000 tons equals how many pounds? This is to do A. Well, tons is larger. 
pounds is smaller, so I'm going to multiply. And I'm going to multiply 10,000 times what? Times 2,000. All right, so one times two is two. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ba-bum, ba-bum, that's 20 million pounds. 5,000 pounds is greater than 20 million pounds? Nope, that's not true. So the answer is C. We started a math problem and it was able to help us determine this was incorrect. This was incorrect. This was correct. And then we had to do the conversions for this one. We had to do the conversions. This is where we started the conversions for that one. Hold on.